for students and party goers, a night on the town may no longer be limited. The MBTA announced that it will be increasing its weekend hours until 2 a.m. and bus hours throughout the week. According to economists, the Massachusetts job outlook for the next five years is expected to grow 12.4% creating 400,000 new jobs. With the marathon less than a week away, 26.2 miles may seem a little bit overwhelming. But we spoke to an expert who had some great tips on how to beat those marathon jitters. The Nickelodeon is one of 21 movie theaters that Lowe's plans to close immediately in order to eliminate its $1.5 billion debt. The company plans to close an additional 50 theaters in the near future. I'm Maria Weir, live in South Boston at the 100th Annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. The atmosphere here is very festive. We have some Irish dancers coming up behind me. The crowd is enormous. There is an estimated 1.2 million people going to show up here today. The parade started at 1 p.m. and it will last until 3. Boston's roads are unique in that they aren't based on a grid system like most national cities. Instead, they're based on cattle trails, which makes the streets more windy. The older the city grew, the wider the streets became, making it more difficult for pedestrians to cross the street. Do you ever find it impossible to cross the street? It took forever, it seemed like forever. Cars kept coming. Or didn't know who had the right of way at a crosswalk. The Department of Transportation says that Boston is the sixth most walkable city in the nation. Yet, in Boston, over 1,100 people are injured or killed by cars every year. So we set up our cameras at two locations to find out how walkable Boston actually is. At the intersection of Park Drive and Buswell Street, there are four crosswalks, but no traffic lights or stop signs to let cars know to yield to pedestrians. This guy had to run to get across the street. Now watch this jaywalker as he almost gets hit by a car. I even had a problem crossing the street. Next, we visited the crosswalk on University Road along Commonwealth Avenue. Here, traffic comes from three different directions, which at times can be confusing to pedestrians and drivers. I spoke to the Department of Transportation to see what they had to say about our scenarios. First, I asked about the intersection at Park Drive. There's no stop signs, no lights, no nothing. Is this a safe crosswalk? I would say it's, it's a difficult crosswalk. If it's a high volume traffic here, I severely doubt that we would not have a signal at the location. I also asked him who has the right of way crossing on Com Ave. Both the pedestrian and the motorist are responsible to make sure that it's safe for both of them to pass. In the past two years, Boston officials have taken action to improve pedestrian safety. But there are still many key factors that need to be improved. Women will claim control over our own destinies and our bodies irrespective of the law. Men and women of all ages joined together in Senate Park today for the emergency march for women's rights sponsored by the National Organization for Women. It saddens me that people think that they can mandate my life and this is part of my life and it's my choice. Choice is the primary reason for marching. In recent times, the Supreme Court has narrowly upheld abortion cases by a 5-4 vote. Advocates are worried about the possibility of Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor stepping down this summer, which could potentially swing those numbers. This is the first time since Roe v. Wade that we have um, an anti-choice Congress, we have an anti-choice House, anti-choice Senate, and an anti-choice president. The march comes exactly three months after the National March for Life. You know, it's first pro-life president. Uh, in eight years, so I think there was a lot of rejoicing amongst pro-lifers that uh, we could actually uh, get some, some very helpful legislation and, and a culture of life back in the United States again. Pro-lifers at the march were not rejoicing. Rebellious to our holy God! I don't think he's doing what he really needs to do. He really needs to stand strong against it, and I don't see that. No matter how the Bush administration approaches the issue, neither side will be satisfied. The NOW campaign will continue this week with a virtual action to inundate senators with mass emails as they return from spring break. Reporting from Washington, D.C., I'm Maria Weir. It is our pleasure to give the Pudding Pot Award to the 51st Annual Woman of the Year, Ms. Drew Barrymore. <laughs>
crowds welcomed Charlie's favorite angel, Drew Barrymore, as she was paraded down the streets of Harvard Square to receive hasty honors as Woman of the Year. While not all fans caught a glimpse of her, they all seemed to enjoy the festivities. I'm a big fan of Drew Barrymore, and I love parades. They're so much fun. When, whenever, when are you going to see like all these people like you know throwing stuff, and guys dressing up like girls? Let's be honest. It's a good time for everyone. After the parade, Barrymore was escorted to the upstairs theater, where she was roasted and toasted for her past roles. Happy birthday to me. I should have never filmed Fat Man Forever. Although she's never been kissed, she was offered plenty today after receiving the Hasty Pudding Award. But what does this award mean to Drew? And this lets me know, because we're always sort of wondering where are we going in life. This is just a really important thing for me to know that I'm headed in the right direction. Drew Barrymore is now among the ranks of many acclaimed actresses and actors that have won the Hasty Pudding Award. Anthony Hopkins will be receiving the Man of the Year Award next week. And as the excitement dies down here today, fans are eagerly waiting this angel's next performance. For BUTV, I'm Maria Weir.